to the podium set up at the NATO summit uh, as we are awaiting President Biden's press conference. The first time he is taking a press conference of this kind since November of 2023. This is something that so many people have their eyes on as more and more people are coming out saying that President Biden ought to step aside for this election campaign. So joining us now to help us break down what's going on in this moment as we await this news conference is Meredith College political analyst and Professor David McLennan. Thank you so much for once again joining us here and lending your expertise. Glad to be with you. Let's talk about the scrutiny that President Biden is currently under. I mean, people are watching every word looking for a misstep. And that's been going on for two weeks now. And even earlier today, when he was introducing Ukrainian President Zelensky, he referred to him as Putin. Yep. And that got a lot of coverage. That's what people are watching for in the press conferences, a mistake, a, a pause that shouldn't be there. So it's tremendous pressure on. And just for, for context there, so he said this at about 5.30 this evening when he was introducing President Vol Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine. He accidentally said uh, Putin, President Putin, and then he corrected himself. That occupied the network airwaves for the last hour and a half. This is an example of what we have seen over the course of the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Do you expect that this is something that can run its course, or will this just continue to go on? The amount of scrutiny on President Biden as these continued calls uh, for him to step aside happen. It only seems to be increasing, yeah. and particularly given, as you mentioned, the calls in Congress and uh, in other places for him to step away. He's been defiant. The more he's defiant and says, I'm going to stay on the ticket, the more scrutiny he'll get. So it's almost a chicken or the egg. This news conference is going to be interesting, one, because it happens so rarely for this particular president. Um, but also, given the circumstances around this, I mean, this is the NATO summit. This is a, a huge deal with world leaders all descending on, Was uh, on Washington, D.C. And yet here we are. Probably a lot of the attention is going to be on his campaign. Typically, the story would be about the war in Ukraine, about other things that NATO would be doing, but the story is about Biden and his candidacy. Yeah. And so it's a shame because there's typically a lot of news that comes out of NATO, but now the news is about a campaign. Today, the New York Times reported that the White House is doing its own internal polling to see how Vice President Kamala Harris stacks up against former President Donald Trump in a matchup for this election to see if maybe that she is the better candidate than President Biden. What's the significance of that internal polling? Well, campaigns use this all the time. I mean, they use it for all kinds of reasons. For This is unprecedented, to use that term we've used too many times. But for a presidential campaign to be testing another candidate to take the place of the president, you know, that in and of itself is a symbol, a signal that the campaign's in real trouble. The mm -hmm. fact that they're testing it, you know, other polls have been showing that President Biden's approval ratings have been going down, Harris's have been going up. So I can't say it's inevitable that this is going to happen, but all signs are pointing to some big changes coming. You are a political analyst. You are an observer of the, the political sphere, and, and you have been doing this for some time. Who have you been watching as you've been witnessing various politicians maneuvering, publicly supporting or, or stepping away from Biden? You know, there, there are a lot of questions about who could replace him on the ticket. Well, you know, watching the leaders in Congress, they're certainly going to be signaling a lot about their support or lack thereof for for, president, uh, for current President Biden. You know, so many of the people whose names have been mentioned, they cannot act like a candidate right now. So you've heard Gretchen Whitmer, you've heard others kind of say, no, I'm totally in Biden's camp. But mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing that Biden is the candidate until he's not. I mean, it'll be right. a a very dramatic sudden shift. That's just politics as it is. It is. All right. Thank you so much for your insight as we continue to wait for this uh, news conference. Brian. Ashley, here in the WRA Live Center as we await the start of that news conference, you mentioned there uh, with David McClellan that uh, soundbite that aired on NBC Nightly News where President Biden introduced Ukrainian President Zelensky and accidentally called him President Putin. I want to play that for you right now. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. 
You got beat President Putin. President Zelensky. And you can see where President Biden corrected himself there. He caught that verbal misstep, and uh, President Zelensky then took to the podium and addressed the crowd. Again, we're waiting for this uh, news conference to begin at any moment now. There's some indication that uh, it's running even farther behind than it was earlier, originally scheduled for 5.30 this evening. Then it got pushed to 6.30, 7 o'clock, and here we are waiting for the start of this. When it happens, you'll see it here on WRAL. Brian, thank you. Let's uh, let's ease our nerves here for a moment and take a look at 